his interest in engaging were that they wanted to position themselves as the ones who asked uh, the sometimes asshole questions, right? Or the questions that were posed in such a way that they were clearly biased or clearly lacking context, but um, could they could use again on their channel to show that they were holding us to account. In the realm of great surprises in one's life, you know, <laughs> if you'd asked me when I was a young man, I would have said marijuana will never be legal. Gay marriage will never be legal. <laughs> There'll never be a black president of the United States. Uh, and, oh, can uh, I and, tell and, you one of my least favorite parts of my job was being the spokesperson against the legalization of marijuana. Because right. Well, knows terrible. That's not something I'm going to die on a hill over, but yeah, uh, yeah at all. Unless, unless it was a hill covered marijuana. <laughs> no, um, that's okay. Uh, Legalize it. Go for it. So yeah. all of that. So all of those things have surprised me. And then I just said, Joe Biden becoming, you know, becoming the bet noir of the right is also a surprise me. When you think of the great surprises in your life, does like the notion that you became known for hashtag Saki bombs, was that like you thought, hey, I'm going to be press secretary and I'm going to become known as combative, fierce, uh, like a viral meme machine on the, and it would be hashtag Saki bombs. Did that, was that on your bingo card when you took the job? No, no. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I have to, do you have siblings? Because it was only like, not, I, not, I, not to my knowledge. Okay, I have two sisters who yeah. have Saki Bomb sweatshirts, which they wear, they're very supportive, but they wear them like on the phone just to be like ironic right. sisters, right? No, I mean, look, I, I think in a weird way, and I, Mike McCray would say this, although he was not either of these jobs in the era of Twitter, so like this is right. why some of this exists, but um, being at the State Department and dealing with, we talked a little bit about Russian propaganda. There's propaganda from all sorts of outlets around the world who have state-run media in that room. It made me actually more fierce as a spokesperson because you realize you have to cut off disinformation pretty right. rapidly. Right. So no, you don't do that because you want to like be, a, I don't even know how to become, a, you know, you do that because again, in the moment we're living in, yeah. And the moment I came into that job in, you could not, it was like, let's reset the tone. Also, this is not going to be a room for speechifying propaganda. Right. So we're going to cut that off. Um, but yes, now I have family members who like, and you know, college friends who like gift me mugs with things because they just want to poke at me. So that's where we go. Well, I said before that no one would have doubted your competence to do the, the the State Department job, no one who knew you. But also, I don't think people would have said, you know, I mean, you had a tart sense of humor sometimes, but it wasn't like she's going to be fierce and she's going to be dropping bombs and she's going to be, you know, she's master of the smackdown is not like what I would have pit, what I would have thought. And yet of all the play, people you drop sake bombs on, of course, we all know your favorite, the favorite target, or maybe the person who elicited the bombs most was Fox News. Fox News' own Peter Ducey. Um, so I'd like to listen to a little bit of that, the, a, the great, a little greatest hits <laughs> compilation of you and Ducey, and then we'll have the last question on the ad, and the other side, you can go home. All right. Do you know any, uh, any examples from his 36 years in the Senate that Joe Biden just hopped on a train and left town to avoid a vote that he knew he was going to lose? Uh, welcome back. Um... <laughs> Most of the criticism is not of leaving Afghanistan, it's the way that he has ordered it to happen, by pulling the troops before getting these Americans who are now stranded. Does he have a sense of that? First of all, I think it's irresponsible to say Americans are stranded. They are not. We are committed to bringing Americans who want to come home, home. John Kerry says that after France was cut out of the nuclear submarine deal and uh, they were upset enough about being left in the dark that they pulled their ambassador, he went to the president uh, and quote, the president literally had not been aware of what had transpired. So what else are you guys not telling the president? Of course he was aware of the French being upset. Let me finish, let me, let me, let me finish. I know John Kerry quite well. Uh, he of course was aware, the president, of uh, the French being displeased about the deal with the Australians. The Secretary of State a few days ago tweeted, I hashtag stand with Ukraine. Has that ever worked at stopping an authoritarian regime from doing anything, a hashtag? I will have to say that unlike the last administration, we don't think Twitter is the only means of engaging or negotiating or discussing important topics. Go ahead. Thank you, Jen. Sorry to see you go. Are you? <laughs> we, you could literally play hours of those. Just do see, do see alone. <laughs> 
And I, and, you know, I've heard Ducey say, oh, there's no contentiousness between the two of us. So my two part last question is, is like, how would you describe the relationship between yourself? Um, and I know you're going to be respectful and you're not going to say anything mean, but some of the questions like, so what else are you guys not telling the president? It's just an asshole question. That's just like a douchey way of phrasing. That's like a why you want to start stop beating your wife question. I mean, do you feel like that? I mean, it's, it seemed obvious to me that, that some of your reactions to him were like that he was asking kind of asshole questions. So like, how do you characterize the relationship? And more broadly, you know, your friend Anita Dunn, I know, thinks that like Fox News is like a is like a, a pestilential menace um, destroying our democracy. Um, I sometimes agree with that often. It's certainly in prime time, I do. Um, so how do you how do you think about the, beyond the specific of Ducey, the broader question of like the problem of Fox News and you were just talking about disinformation, they're pretty big purveyor of it. So just talk about those few things and then you can go home. Yeah, as I used to say in the briefing room, there's a lot to unpack there. Yes, but there is. I will yeah. say, there's a compound, Kamala Harris um, the other day said, accused me of asking her a compound question. She's like, that's a compound yeah. question, John. I'm like, yes, yes. yeah, well, yeah. you know, I'm sorry. It's a great, it's a super, I mean, meaning we could talk about this for an hour. I agree. Uh, Fox uh, shares disinformation. They share inaccurate information. Um, and that is a huge problem. Now, that also happens on social media platforms, uh, Facebook, Twitter, all sorts of platforms out there where disinformation is shared. What the challenge is, I think, for Democrats or just people in general is that a lot of people watch Fox News. A lot of people get their information on social media platforms. So my view continues to be that um, the answer in this moment is not to not engage because then you make that the story. There are moments when that might be the right moment, but the moment was not in the first year, two years of an administration following Donald Trump. I mean, Fox would have loved it for us to have a fight with them in kind of a um, morale, a moral, you know, a moral uh, fight right. with them. Uh, I, we don't want to do that. And I didn't want to do that. Um, and none of us wanted to do that. I appeared more on Fox News Sunday than I think any other Sunday show. Because you know why? Uh, you just go into the den and answer their questions and Democrats watch it, independents, and maybe you get some points across. Okay, I would say... Because they um, enjoy watching you bitch slap Ducey. That's the thing. That's like those well, viewers are like a little bit now like, yeah. that also goes to the problem we're living in. And, you know, yes, I, I uh, believe many Democratic things. I've been a Democrat. I am a Democrat. You know, people... Peter Ducey and I would have a back and forth in the briefing room. Um, he would be a hero on the right for, you know, smacking me back. And I would be a hero on the other side for smacking him back. It's sort of a small microcosm of like what's wrong with how information travels in discourse, right? Because it's the same conversation. He and I actually had, I know he said this and I've said this, a pretty civil, okay relationship. Um, uh, and you know, I knew he's working for an outlet that is not a supporter of President Biden, not a supporter of Democrats, not a supporter of a lot of the reasons why I got into working in public service and government to begin with. Um, but also there was a reality of the reach of how many people were watching it and the desire not to make that the story that made it in our interest to engage. His interests in engaging were that they wanted to position themselves as the ones who asked uh, the sometimes asshole questions, right? Or the questions that were posed in such a way that they were clearly biased or clearly lacking context, but um, could they could use, again, on their channel to show that they were holding us to account. Um, yeah. So in some ways, um, it tells you, it's a, it's just an example of maybe like what's wrong with our discourse in some ways, but, um, but also he and I had, you know, the last, the last day I was there, um, I, we took a picture together, um, yeah. and he tweeted the picture yeah. and it's, oh God. it like really blew people's minds for right. some reason. Also right. the fact that he's extremely tall and I'm not, which for some right. reason became like this funny thing. Listen to my conversation with the one and only Jen Saki, wherever, and I mean, wherever you get your podcasts.